Hello everyone, my name is Sebastian Macedo and welcome to Headlines and Prophecy, where we tie together what we're seeing in the news cycle uh, along with what's prophetic or laid out in prophecy in the Bible. We also dispel, uh, try to dispel some of the conspiracy theories that grow through some news events. So in the headlines, uh, United Arab Emirates and Bahrain both signed last week, both signed normalization agreements with Israel which is historic on many levels. Uh, it's revolutionary and it's also prophetic. Uh, what's different than the other two neighbors of Israel, Egypt, which signed a peace agreement in um, 1979, and Jordan, which signed a peace agreement in 1994, I believe. A normalization agreement allows for travel, allows for diplomacy, education, technology, healthcare, uh, travel between the two countries. It's normalizing relationships and it's historic in a geopolitical sense because of uh, most all, in fact, all of the neighbors of Israel, all of the Islamic states that are neighbors of Israel have been reluctant to normalize or even sign peace agreements uh, to help the Palestinians negotiate a, a peace agreement with Israel. And it's always been a stumbling block in that these neighbors have all uh, pretty much frozen Israel out and basically said most of them denied uh, Israel's ability to exist. So normalizing relationships is a, is a huge step. It's not just peace, it's normalization, which means that you're going to start to see travel and commerce between uh, the two countries. You're going to be, begin to see um, tourism. Uh, in fact, the agreement invites uh, the 11 million uh, United Arab Emirates uh, citizens and Bahrain citizens to come and worship at the Dome of the Rock. <clears throat> and so this is historic and, and pretty, pretty, you know, pretty profound when you're looking at the landscape and where we were five years ago. President Trump and Jared Kirshner and team have been pushing behind the scenes at, at, in all different angles. And so uh, I would expect that Oman and Morocco and Saudi Arabia and eventually Egypt and Jordan would all normalize relations with, uh, with Israel, which is historic on many levels and revolutionary. Uh, but what we're seeing prophetically is even more profound uh, because of the way the lines are being drawn, which were written in Bible prophecy almost 20 years ago. Uh, Ezekiel spoke of a war that hasn't occurred yet. It's a it's laid out in Ezekiel chapter 38 and part of 39. And uh, just to give you, I guess, a biblical landscape or, or explanation, Ezekiel chapter 37 is about the reformation of Israel, which occurred in 1948. Uh, we were the first nation to recognize her as a new nation. Ezekiel prophesied uh, in, in chapter 37 that from all nations of the earth, which is much different than what we've seen in the Old Testament because uh, they usually were taken captive by, you know, for instance, Egypt. They were taken captive by Babylon. And so they, they moved from that country back. In Ezekiel 37, they moved from all nations from around the world coming back into the land of Israel. And so in Ezekiel 38, we see a war and the nations are drawn out uh, very clearly. Uh, they're, they're, uh, the, there's two sides or two groups. The first group, the group that opposes Israel, that will eventually try to invade Israel, is made up of Russia. When you read the text, you'll see uh, Muscovy, which is Moscow, Rosh, which is the Russians or the Russians, Tubal, which is a city in, uh, in Russia where Gary Powers, the U-2 pilot, uh, was, was shot down back in the 60s. And so it's known as Gog in the land of Magog, which is basically end time ruler. And so uh, Russia leads this coalition, which is made up of Haik, which is Syria, uh, Persia, which is Iran, uh, Tagarma, which is Turkey, uh, and Kush, and, uh, and others, which is uh, Libya and Sudan. So when you look at it, it's a Russian led group with Syria, Iran, Turkey, Libya, Sudan, and then it says Gomer in its bands. And Gomer is basically uh, Azerbaijan and some of the, the nations that were a part of the old Soviet Union. 
And so they line up and they eventually invade Israel. And what's interesting is the other side, us. It's Israel, and uh, it says in the text, the merchants of Tarshish, which uh, Tarshish was a, a seaport in Spain, but it was an English seaport. The merchants from, uh, the, from England would move onto the European continent through Tarshish. And it says, so Tarshish and her young lions so the offspring of England is the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. And so uh, that's us. And then it says Sheba and Dedan. And what's so interesting about the prophetic events that occurred last week and the week before is that Sheba and Dedan is the Saudi Peninsula. And Oman and uh, Bahrain and uh, Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates and Dubai is the is the major city in United mm -hmm. Arab Emirates. They are all a part of Sheba. So they're opposing this other force. So, you know, by by virtue of, of coming together and normalizing, we're steps closer uh, to this uh, to this event. The war uh, is uh, starts off with when you can read this and you should read it starts off with diplomacy. Our side, uh, Israel, U.S., and England, and, and group and company, uh, tell them, why have you done this? Why are you getting ready to do this? You shouldn't do this. Later on in chapter 38, they invade, and the Lord says, my mountains, my countries, which is the U.S., Israel, uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, England, and, and others, many other nations. And uh, essentially... The invading army, Russia and uh, company, uh, are destroyed. And not only are they destroyed, but the Bible says that I'll leave but a sixth part of you. In other words, five-sixths of their invading armies are destroyed. And we're not sure if that reaches into their land or not. But if you read the text, it's very interesting because you, the bodies would fall on the land of Israel, the mountains, mountains of Israel, and... It would take professional grave diggers to bury them. They'd have to set a sign by them. So we're not sure if it's biological, if it's limited nuclear. We're not sure what the weaponry is. But this war, I believe, is a precursor to you know, giving Israel the ability to build its new temple. Because if you think about it, if these nations are eradicated or eliminated, essentially the Shia community of Islam or most of it, if, if Syria is annihilated, Iran, uh, Turkey, uh, Russia, uh, you know, uh, uh, Northern Africa, and some of the countries in Northern Africa, and er what you have left are, are Islamic states that have signed normalization agreements allowing for the worship uh, on the Dome of the Rock or, or the Temple Mount, I'm sure that the agreement, because uh, when you read about the, the tribulation period, um, it says that it, it, it begins, the seven years begins with the signing of the covenant, of the covenant. In other words, Antichrist will be one of many that will sign the covenant. And the covenant, I believe, is the agreement that legitima legitimizes Israel not only as a nation, but allows for going back to the sacrificial system which is laid out in that same verse. It's in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and allows for, uh, sets the stage for eventually uh, Antichrist coming. So it's a big deal to have the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain. Uh, we're pretty sure that Oman, Morocco, uh, eventually Saudi Arabia, uh, so that whole Saudi Peninsula, there's some other small nations that, that will come together and normalize agreements with Israel. And after this Ezekiel 38 war, there'll be tremendous peace, which again is another sign uh, of the Lord's return. I want to thank you for watching today and, and uh, encourage you to uh, go to our website. We teach on eschatology, and you, we're going to try to do these blogs every week and uh, try and bring some insight to news and trends and also some of the conspiracy theories that tend to grow um, out, of, uh, out of the news cycle. So with that, God bless you guys and have a great day.